Hi, everybody, and welcome to the discovery webinar for the new budgeting module in the adult financial literacy series. My name is Natalie, and I'm going to walk you through some of the key elements of the module, followed by a demo so you can get a firsthand look at the new content. Uh, before we dive in, I'll just mention that Hub Discovery webinars are a great way to learn more about our newest programs and how to best facilitate them. So make sure you're keeping an eye out in our newsletter and on the professional development portal on the Hub platform. In this webinar, you can ask any questions through the chat icon at the bottom of the screen, and I have left some designated time for a Q&A at the end of the session. So with that said, let's get started with a brief introduction. Great. So in this module, participants reflect on what their financial priorities are and explore the difference between wants and needs. By exploring the current ways in which they approach spending, participants use reflection skills to identify how to practice healthier spending habits and gain control of their finances by budgeting. Participants learn how to apply their financial priorities to their own budget by navigating how to input income and how to input their expenses as well. So our module design allows for participants to complete these goals during the module and implement them into their spending habits after the session. Some of these goals include exploring the difference between the wants and needs of the participants. They'll identify how to track current spending and plan future spending. They will learn the skill of budgeting. They'll identify expenses and learn how to make a budget and learn how to adjust that budget as needed. The participants will also be using a variety of skills throughout the module, including goal setting, critical reflection of personal spending habits, healthy spending practices, navigating the steps of how to prepare a budget. They will use analytical skills, self-awareness, and interpersonal skills as well. The main topics in the module are an introduction to tracking and budgeting, and also the personal goals through the five steps of budgeting. Great, so going into the personal finance theme, we can see here that we have a few resources available to us as facilitators. So each specific module is located on its very own module card that will give you a brief synopsis of what to expect in the module, but you also have access to your journal and the facilitator guide. If you've delivered hub modules before, I'm sure you're very familiar with these resources, but in case we have any new folks here, I'll just quickly walk through what each of these are. So let's begin with the facilitator guide. So if you press the guide button, the document will open up as a PDF, so it can easily be saved to your device or you could print it off. And the idea here is to have the guide open while you're facilitating the module. Some facilitators like to have it open on their device and others like to have a physical copy, but it's totally up to you. You can save or print it quite easily. Using the facilitator guide is a very dependable way to provide a meaningful and interactive experience with your client. And we provide you with all the tools for making this happen. And we begin here with some background information on the module you're delivering. And this information is what we reviewed at the beginning of this training today. Um, and Again, you don't have to go through this with your clients. This is just background information for you. Um, so when you are ready to work with clients, you can go ahead and skip to the section of the guide that's called the script. 
Um, so this essentially allows you to follow along with what the participants are seeing on their screens, and you can read aloud the content that needs to be delivered on each page. Um, the content that's in the guide is additional information that pairs well with the content that's on the screen. And then you're also given some instructions here on what to do next, such as going to the next page or engaging the participants in a discussion, um, which are also given examples of as well. Not all pages have discussion questions, only a few. Um, and they're also optional, so you don't have to do the discussion if you feel maybe your participants aren't um, as engaged in those, or if they prefer doing different kinds of activities to reflect on their learning, that's totally up to you. And then before we move on, I'll draw your attention to um, the last page. Okay, it seems not to be loading, but on the final page of Hub Facilitator Guides, we do include a list of resources. And in this case, it's a list of financial resources that either you or your participants can use. And we include those in the journal as well for the participants' convenience. So on that module card, you can also find the copy of the journal. And it's really important that all of your participants have a copy of their own journal before beginning the module, because this is where they will be writing answers to the reflection questions that are shown throughout the program. Um, so this is what this journal looks like. We usually include a quote at the back. Um, here is that resource page that is also in the facilitator guide. And then we include a take home practice. The practice in this journal is a practice budget, um, but we'll get into that later on in the demo. And you can also inform your participants that they have a notes page at the back that they can write on or draw on as you are facilitating the module, if that's how they choose to learn. Um, and we also include a color jam as well. A lot of people like to color while they are retaining information as a way to absorb the information a little bit better. So these are all really great resources that you can let your participant know of. And finally, we can get started with the demo of the program. And you can explain here that whether they have used a budget before or any kind of budgeting system in the past, this module will highlight some key outcomes that they can take with them for planning their finances, uh, finances in the future. And if they have budgeted in the past, they'll learn something new and gain a little bit more practice. And then the following pages provide you with the opportunity to get to know your participants further and raise engagement among the group. So we always begin by sharing the topics they will be learning throughout the program, as well as a check-in question. Um, and then we also have the space for your participants to share what they think the rules of engagement are, or in other words, rules that allow us to have the space that we would like. So for example, this is where you can review that participants can be active listeners, so maybe not interrupting other people, also being respectful of other people's answers or beliefs, values, cultural views. Um, and if anyone's having trouble coming up with rules of engagement, you can select the light bulb and we provide a list of suggestions. Um, sometimes if you have facilitated before, you'll know that the odd time a participant might not be super interested in sharing at the very beginning. So 
In that case, I would recommend inviting them to read aloud the suggestions and then so selecting their favorite one that they can put in the input fields here. And this is where we introduce the journal to participants and explain that there is a journal moment at the end of each topic in the module. And this is a chance for everyone to reflect on the content that they had just learned. Um, so this is where I recommend you to inform your participants. They can answer in any way they choose within a variety of modalities, whether it be writing or drawing on that notes page, et cetera. And before we dive into the content, we want to make sure that everybody understands the difference between what tracking is and what budgeting is, because this is something that people, myself included, will get commonly mixed up. So we have included some definitions here that highlight tracking, which is a record of the spending you've already done and budgeting, which is making a future plan for your spending. Both of these topics will be further covered throughout this module. And we also highlight the importance of balancing the things that we want in life and the things that we need in life. So this is an essential skill to learn before we start our budget. Um, so that we know specifically what we're budgeting for. And we want participants to be sure of what their priorities are so that they're not spending their money on impulse purchases, which include things like gum and lotto tickets, for example. While they seem like small purchases at the time, they actually add up over time and can end up costing a lot of money. And these are called money leaks. Great, so this is an interactive activity that allows participants to explore their wants and their needs and give them some practice for tracking their spending. So if we select the spending tracker button, um, you can walk your participants through the process. Um, you might have a participant that is willing to share some examples from their own life, but if they don't feel comfortable, that's totally fine. The facilitator guide provides some very specific scenarios that you can apply to the activity. So using the examples in the facilitator guide uh, to track the spending from the hypothetical situation, we can say, um, I spent maybe $250 to have my fridge repaired. You'll have to specify whether that is a want or a need. Let's say it's a need. And then you can identify if that thing is a money leak or not. And as we reviewed in previous pages, a money leak is something that seems small in the moment, um, but kind of adds up over time. Uh, maybe we say we spent about $900 on rent. This is a need and it's not a money leak. If we add another example here, let's say we spent $4.50 on a lotto ticket. This is something that I didn't need, it was something I wanted, and I would personally identify that as a money leak. So this is just a really great way to explain the process of tracking your money. And the idea here is to track your money spent over the last couple of days. 
And as you can see here, everything that you've entered will be tallied up in the bottom here. And you can also select the export to CSV button. Basically what that does is it takes all of the information that you plugged into the spending tracker and it will enter it into an Excel spreadsheet for you that will be saved to whatever device you're on. Um, and then you could either print that off or save it and share it with your participants as a way for them to see an overview of their spending. And before we move on, I'll also share this piece of text from the facilitator guide that's very important to note, which is that everyone has different wants and needs, and these could look totally different between one person and another. So one person's want can be another person's need. For example, buying a new bike. This could be a want for one person because maybe they already have a bike and just want a newer, faster one for leisure. But for another person, a bike may be considered a need if they live far from work and need the bike for transportation. So you can ask your participants to reflect on their personal wants and needs because it will vary between person to person. So the purpose of tracking is to ensure you write down all of your spending to encourage awareness of your spending habits and catch those money leaks. And a way we can do this is by writing them down. We have a couple examples here. You can have a daily spending journal just on pen and paper. There's a lot of really great free apps out there that allow you to track spending. Of course, not everyone has accessibility to that. Um, but another great way would be an Excel spreadsheet. And here we take a bit of a break from the content to provide a mindfulness practice. And it's a really great way for people to become more aware of money and give them the opportunity to develop a new relationship with it. Mindfulness can help you focus, allowing you to control your urges and make financial decisions that will benefit you in the long run. Mindfulness can help you plan for the future by bringing clarity to your mind. So I recommend reading aloud the uh, Why This Works tab. And to view the practice, you can select that button and then just press the play button here. Um, I'll share a couple minutes of the meditation so you can see what it looks like. This mindfulness practice uses imagery and allows us to feel our breath find a sense of grounding and help to resource ourselves in order to feel safe. I invite you to sit in a comfortable posture, placing your feet flat on the ground, connected with the earth beneath you. Feeling the sensations of the feet in contact with the ground. So the mindfulness practices are not mandatory by any means, but we do encourage participants to give it a try. And you can return to this practice at any point in the module if participants are interested. And here we encourage folks to test their learning about what they have gone through in the module so far with a true or false activity. 
Um, and it's important we re remind participants that there are no right or wrong answers necessarily. The purpose of this activity is to just reflect. And this is something that you can do together as a group. If there's more than one, everyone can go one at a time. Um, and you're also welcome to participate as well in order to encourage engagement. So basically what we do for the activity is read aloud the statement and then invite participants to answer if this is a true or false statement. And the answer will show up at the bottom. So if you get the answer wrong, then you will get the correct answer below that you can share with your participants. And there's about five questions in this activity. And once you've gone through all the questions, you can go to the next page. And in this part of the module, we dive into the topic of budgeting specifically, like why we need a budget and how we can start. I'll just jump ahead slightly to share some of the highlights of this topic. Um, and you can always select the button with the three lines in the center to access the table of contents. So starting a budget can seem overwhelming, but we'll break it down using an activity to put our learning into action, very similar to the tracking activity. So we start with the basics by identifying the sources of income or how much money per month you receive, and then identifying your expenses. So how much money per month you need to spend on what you consider to be necessities. Um, and just like the previous activity, we do provide a scenario in the guide in case participants aren't comfortable sharing what their expenses are. So this hypothetical person has uh, two types of income every month. They have a salary of $2,000 per month from their retail job. And they also have $200 a month from their babysitting job. And that brings us to a total cost of 2,200. So then going into our expenses tab at the bottom here, they have four expenses every month. So they have $800 per month for rent. They have $200 for transportation. and $50 a month for entertainment and 400 per month for groceries. Great, and then of course you get the total cost for those as well. So you can explain here to participants that if they have money left over, or in other words, the difference between their expenses and their income, then they can choose what they would like to do with that extra money. And a huge recommendation would be saving or paying off a credit card. Um, and this can also be export, exported to an Excel spreadsheet as well, which is great because if your participants do want to share their own expenses in the budget here, then they can have an objective overview of their budget in the spreadsheet, and they're welcome to take that with them after completing the module. And after the budgeting activity, we have a journal moment which in which participants reflect using these questions here. So while completing your budget, did you struggle with identifying your needs and wants? If you could change anything in your budget, what would it be? And what would it mean for your spending habits? And then what are some money leaks or areas where you could spend less? 
Sometimes factors such as a change in your financial situation can affect your current budget. So always try to readjust your budget when big life events and financial changes happen. And also remind participants to evaluate their budget from time to time. So if their actual spending varies from their budget, readjust your figures to make it more realistic. And just as we begin to wrap up this module, we share the following quote by Dave Ramsey. And along with any quotes throughout any hub modules, if you select the view questions button, you can share out loud the questions with participants and invite everyone to share their answers in a circle format. We have a final journal moment here. And we also have a take home practice, which is an opportunity to reflect on the knowledge and skills learned in the module. And they can do this either in the module if you have extra time with them. Um, but since they'll be taking the journals with them, they are welcome to do the activity at any time. And for this, we include one more hypothetical scenario um, with a opportunity for participants to enter this into their very own budget so that they will get a little bit of practice with budgeting. Um, we do include a couple budgeting systems in the journal. So you could also let them know that they can practice with the hypothetical scenario and then maybe try creating their own with their own figures. And as always, we conclude the module with a sharing circle in which participants share one tip that they learned about tracking and budgeting today. <laughs>